It being 9 a.m., we're going to call this meeting to order. Uh, if we could stand, and begin with a moment of silence, followed by the pledge, please. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for 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 the Republic any we any changes to the agenda? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, members Mr. of the commission. Um, not necessarily formal uh, uh, changes, but just a notation for the board under item uh, five point one regular agenda. Uh, when we get to that item, if the board would consider a recommendation from the county attorney prior to that, um, that would be helpful. We'll have uh, uh, a question for the board at that time. And then under item six, commissioner correspondence, committee reports, upcoming meetings and future agendas, if the board would acknowledge uh, Commissioner Phobes uh, has been requested to uh, participate in a blue ribbon committee with the Association of Minnesota Counties, we would acknowledge it at that point in the agenda. Okay, so really there's no changes to the agenda. At this point, Mr. Chair, I'll move approval of the agenda. We have a motion from Commissioner Dolan. Do we have a second? Mr. Chair, I'll second that motion. Seconded by Danielski. Uh, we will be doing roll call votes. I'll try to maintain the same order. Uh, Danielski. Aye. Ferrant. Aye. Bobby. Aye. Dolan. Aye. Schmeezing votes aye. Um, the agenda is approved. We'll move on to our consent agenda. Mr. Chair, I'll move the consent agenda. Motion by Commissioner Foby. Is there a second? I'll second, Mr. Chair. Seconded by Commissioner Dolan. Further discussion? Okay, we'll begin with the roll call. Commissioner Danielski? Aye. Commissioner Barant? Aye. Commissioner Foby? Aye. Commissioner Dolan? Aye. Commissioner Schmizing votes aye. Consent agenda is approved. Announcements. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the commission. Just a, a few announcements uh, for you as we start the meeting. Uh, first of all, uh, Bruce Price from the Veteran Services Officer Office would like uh, the board to be aware uh, that tomorrow, May 6th, uh, there will be an operation called Operation American Resolve. It includes uh, flyovers of several parts of the state, including uh, Sherburne County and Elk River here and St. Cloud. Uh, in uh, in uh, uh, really in commemoration of the hard work of our uh, law enforcement and our public health and our health uh, uh, officials who are working so hard on the pandemic. Uh, approximately 11 to 11.40 a.m. tomorrow, uh, there will be overflights in the area with uh, military aircraft. And that, again, is called Operation American Resolve. In addition, uh, would like to note, uh, you do have several proclamations. Um, on your agenda today, we do not have a formal proclamation, but this week is also um, known as Public Service Recognition Week uh, nationally. It takes on special um, meaning this year, of course, because of the need and the desire to honor the men and women uh, who serve uh, our nation, our uh, state, and our county, uh, and our local governments during this pandemic. And so May 4th to May 8th is also known as uh, Public Service Recognition Week. And then finally, uh, we will do a more formal briefing 
uh, on COVID-19, but I did want the board to be aware that uh, Sherburne County did have its first fatality uh, because of COVID-19 uh, uh, basically yesterday or, or yesterday evening. So we'll, uh, we'll talk about where we're at, uh, but it's a, a somber note to start our meeting. Okay, any other announcements from anyone on the floor? Any commissioners? Okay, hearing none, um, we'll move on to our Elk River landfill license modification. Mr. Messel. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the commission. Um, I believe our county attorney will come up to the podium and uh, make a, uh, give you some background on the issue and uh, ask for the board's um, direction. Uh, Mr. Chair, Commissioners, uh, Kathleen Haney, Sherburne County Attorney. Last night at close of business, I received a telephone call from outside counsel for waste management. They had um, apparently just recently been retained and had asked for an extension of time and that this matter be removed from the agenda and tabled over. Um, that, of course, is up to the, the board's prerogative as to whether or not they wish to do so. I just want to make sure that in doing so that the county board understands that the terms of the license are dictated by the board itself. Obviously, we take comment, we listen to all of the information, but in the end, it is a decision-making process for yourself. So based on that, the request from outside counsel was to table. Uh, my suggestion is a two-week time period, if you so choose. Is there a motion to table? Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to table um, that agenda item until our next meeting. Motion by Dolan. Do we have a second? Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll second. Seconded by Commissioner Foby, is that correct? Yes. Okay, no, no discussion on a motion to table. We'll begin with the roll call. Uh, Commissioner Danielski. Aye. Commissioner Barrett? Aye. Commissioner Foby? Aye. Commissioner Dolan? Aye. Commissioner Schmeezing votes aye. Motion to table passes. I thank you. Thank you, sir. I did I did skip over open forum. Do we have anyone signed up? We do not have anybody signed up, board chair. Okay. <laughs> Saved on that one. Okay, our 952 item, Northern Metals uh, Recycling License Modification. Mr. Lucas. All right. Mr. Chair, members of the board, in front of you is a modification, proposed modification to Northern Metals um, license. As you know, a license was originally issued August of 2018, it was then renewed for a five-year term, and um, shortly after the incident, the, the, the fire occurred, the metals reached out, and with a request to modify their license to add for additional safety measures, um, screening procedures, and uh, additional requirements for storage of their acceptable waste material. With those changes, staff then made some significant modifications to the license, and uh, that is before you. Um, with that, I recommend approval of this license. Scott here is, uh, if you have any questions for him. They're up and operating. They're starting to slowly move through the, the burnt material. They're, they're Processing that at roughly a 50-50 blend, and um, you know, once they have moved through that material, then they can start bringing new material in. They will have to make some repairs to the storage pad, all of which staff is monitoring the cleanup and repair procedures. So, any questions? Are there any questions? Any questions from any? I think we've all kind of lived this at this point, so. If there are none, I would entertain a motion to approve. Mr. Chair, I'll move approval of the amended solid waste facility license. Motion by Commissioner Dolan. Do we have a second? Second. 
Mr. Chair, I'll second that motion. Seconded by Commissioner Danielski. Any further discussion or questions on this issue? Mr. Chair, I'd just like to thank Northern Metals. I, mean, I think it's a, a testament to their dedication to the community that they were proactive in bringing some of these changes forward and acknowledging that there were some, some things that needed to be addressed in there. And, uh, you know, I read through the whole thing and uh, they address a lot, of, a lot of the community feedback that there was during the event. And I appreciate, appreciate you guys coming and working with us to make it right. So, Quite a chain of events in yeah, for us with 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 this with northern metals and and all the things that we're facing this year we are really in uncharted territory so that is true thank you commissioner dolan for your comments uh with that we'll do the roll call commissioner danielski votes aye commissioner barant aye commissioner foby aye Commissioner Dolan? Aye. Commissioner Schmeezing votes aye. Motion carries. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Center City Housing Letter of Support. Good morning, Mary Jo. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, Commissioners. <clears throat> Um, I was here in March with Nancy Cashman from Center City Housing, and we presented um, information about their desire to uh, start a development called River Heights Supported Housing Facility in Southeast St. Cloud, which would be built right next to Rivercrest, which is in Sherburne County. Um, my understanding was the board needed a little more time to think about this and, and consider options or consider their questions. I've not received any specific questions from any of the commissioners, so um, I can review what, what we said before. Um, Center City Housing has many developments throughout the state, 850 housing units across Minnesota. Um, they house people that generally are very difficult to house, primarily chronic inebriates, and um, now they are branching out into working with people with lived experience of mental health issues. Um, they spent quite a long time trying to find a spot elsewhere in the St. Cloud area to build this facility, and um, we're, we're not able to find anything. And since they already own the property, where Rivercrest is sitting and it's large enough, um, they are looking at now building at, at that site. There's some efficiencies that they would have in terms of staffing, purchasing, um, you know, maintenance, those kinds of things if they're right next door. Um, in my estimation, um, well, let me back up. They would manage the building and provide supportive housing services. So once again, it wouldn't be just providing a place for people to live. They would be providing supported housing, which includes case management, transportation, um, helping them hook up with whatever other services they might need in the community, and health services. They expect to hire 15 people um, to staff this facility. Um, the benefits to Sherburne County in, would include increased low-income housing, increased tax base, increased employment, and increased purchasing of food and necessities. So they would they would be spending money on a on a monthly basis to feed and and house people. Um, Sherburne County Health and Human Services would benefit from this specifically because we have a hard time moving people out of the. the community-based health hospitals and the ERTS facilities, um, when they're ready to move on, it's very difficult to find a place for someone to live who has a challenging rental history, which many, which most of these folks do. And so, um, you know, we think this would be a good, a big help for us because, again, if we don't get people out, we pay larger amounts of money. Um, also, I just wanted to share that um, Tuesday, no, Monday night, the St. Cloud City Council approved a resolution of support unanimously for, for this facility. 
So I'm, I'm asking um, for permission, approval to sign a letter of support to allow them to apply for funding with the state. Any questions? Mr. Mr. Chair? Yes. I do have a question. Um, what cost is this also then to the county? Um, we've listed some of the potential benefits, but at what cost then would we bear to support it? The only cost that I'm aware of is that um, we would have to have eligibility specialists processing um, the financial assistance applications. Generally, um, and then our, we do our eligibility specialists have caseloads of three to four to five hundred, um, so forty more is is not a significant increase. And some of those we and would be processing fun? anyhow. Right, and some of them we would be processing anyway. And then the funds come from the state. Yes, yes. This is all medical assistance funding. So we would just be providing manpower. Manpower to, to process. Um, manpower to process those applications. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Which we're doing across the county now for anyone. Right. That, if. That, Yes. If, however, if someone came there from another county, we, we would end up processing their that, application that, too. Okay. Commissioner Dolan, did you? No, Mr. Chair, I was going to move approval of giving Mary Jo permission to sign the letter of support for Center City Housing. Is there a second? Mr. I'll second that, Phoebe. Seconded by Commissioner Phoebe. Further discussion? You know, it's, Center City has a track record in Sherburn County with Rivercrest, and it's a good one. So it makes it pretty easy for us to take a look at what they're already doing, and I would expect that this facility will be operated the same way that the one that's already here, and and uh, I think that's a positive thing. So, yeah, Mr. Chair, I, I you know I requested some additional time to do my own due diligence and just understand the model a little bit better and. I, I am in 100% agreement that this, this company has run a stand-up operation since they've been here, and I expect the same to happen here. So. Very good. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay, we'll do Mr. the roll. Chair. Yes, Commissioner Danielski. And my questions were just for the um, viewing public to know that um, this is a, um, um organization that is helping, but it's not going to be it's through the state. So that was basically my reasoning for the question. Well, I appreciate your questions. I mean, that's helpful for people to understand that this is not a not a financial impact on on Sherburn County, but a benefit to us. So, uh, with that, right. we'll do the roll Thank you. call. Uh, Commissioner Danielski. Aye. Commissioner Barant. Aye. Commissioner Phoebe. Aye. Commissioner Dolan. Aye. Commissioner Schmeising votes aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Jo. Thank you, Mary Jo. I believe I have the next one as well. Now that we've got a place to live, we need to <laughs> <laughs> get our feet there. Okay. <laughs> We are on agenda 5.4, correct? Right, right. Yes. Okay. Wright County Dental Clinic letter of support. Oh, no. Nope. Oh, I'm sorry. ResCare. Oh, ResCare. Pardon me. And and I, I apologize for taking a few minutes. Um, this probably could have just gone on the consent agenda, but this has been a, a long journey, and I wanted to share it with you and, and thank you as well. Um, in 2016, ResCare, February of 2016, ResCare, contacted me for a letter of support to apply for a grant to start looking into setting up an ERTS um, in Elk River area. They were awarded the grant, but um, it took too long for them to find a spot, so they lost that grant, but proceeded anyway. So last February, um, 
no, February of 2019, the Elk River City Council approved a conditional use permit allowing them to renovate the former Masonic Lodge located at 633 Upland Avenue in Elk River to operate the Earths. Um, and the Earths is now scheduled to open on May 18th. I consider this a minor miracle, but I also, I know that several commissioners were very involved in conversations with the Elk River um, City Council and Elk River City staff in support of this. So I just wanted to thank all of you for that. So my ask today is um, that this uh, contract be approved because that needs to happen for them to open. Entertain a motion to approve. Um, I would like to make a motion to approve this um, action. Okay, motion by Barant. I'll second. Seconded by Dolan. Is there any other discussion on this? Mr. Chair, I'd just like to compliment staff on this. It was, uh, you know, these type of things have a lot of stigma that go with them, and I know staff took a lot of extra time to not only advocate for the project, but to educate the general public and educate uh, other elected officials as far as what the project was, what it meant, and, and how it helped our community. And I know it was, it was a tough slog, but I think ultimately it'll be worth it. Um, and it shows sometimes you just got to put your put your head down and drive forward. So yes. I appreciate your efforts. Thank you. Yeah, there were Mr. some disappointments Chair. along the way. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Who did we have? Uh, I'm sorry, I interrupted. Uh, Lisa, uh, I too just want to reiterate what Tim said. Thanks for our staff um, for just plowing ahead with this and uncovering every stone so we could make this happen. And um, these are tough things at times, but I'm proud to be a, a part of a board and a county that is supporting this, these critical services that are still lacking across our county and our state. So thank you, Mary Jo and staff. Very welcome. Thank you, Commissioner Foby. Is there any um, other comments? Um, this is Commissioner Brand. I just want to also uh, thank all the staff for their hard work and also for the support of other commissioners on this board. This is, I think, a very good step forward, and it took a lot of work, but I'm very happy that we are where we're at. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Commissioner Brand. Okay, we'll do the roll call. Commissioner Janowski. Aye. Commissioner Barant. Aye. Commissioner Foby. Aye. Commissioner Dolan. Aye. Commissioner Schmiesing votes aye. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you, Mary Jo. Now we are moving on to the letter for Wright County of support for the construction of a dental clinic. Morning, commissioners. Good morning. Um, yeah, uh, we're revisiting this at the April 7th board meeting. I came before you and asked for a letter of support. Wright County wants to build a dental clinic uh, in their new government center. This is a $2 million bonding ask. Um, just a uh, side note, I did contact the Wright County Public Health Director um, because of the latest um, with the bonding, and they said that they are still optimistic, that they still feel like a bonding bill will go through, and that they have a few identified champions um, at the state legislature. So um, they say that this is still full steam ahead. Um, some concerns were um, brought uh, to, for staff to research um, at that board meeting when we requested a letter of support, um, primarily around if this dental clinic would be competition for other providers in the community, as well as isn't it more of a MA reimbursement policy discussion. Um, I attached a memo um, kind of um, reiterating an email that I had sent to commissioners 
Um, regarding it, um, Wright County has a public health task force and they, this has kind of been their priority issue for the last year to 18 months. And so they've done extensive research, extensive community engagement. So while Sherburne County hasn't done the same work, we do have some Sherburne County information and um, we can just echo um, qualitatively what Wright County has already put forth the effort into, into doing. Um, currently, Minnesota is 49th in the nation for dental reimbursement for children. Um, so they get uh, 27 cents on every dollar. Um, Sherburne County has no uh, dental providers in the county that accept MA reimbursement. Um, also on our last county health rankings report, um, Sherburne County ranks well below the state average of dental providers, one dentist available for roughly every 2,300 individuals. And in 2017, which is the most current data we have, uh, only 30% of Sherburne County Medicaid enrollees were able to obtain dental care. Uh, the MA policy uh, discussion is large and nuanced, and quite frankly, uh, Ray County uh, Public Health Task Force decided not to uh, take this on um, in terms of reimbursement, uh, increasing reimbursement levels as they didn't think that there was political will at the Capitol um, to tackle that beast. Um, it has been um, discussed a number of different times uh, legislatively. Um, and so uh, that's one reason why they chose uh, the bonding route. And then, as I said, it's, it's a $2 million bonding ask um, to construct a 6,200 square foot facility. Um, and they estimate they'll be able to serve 5,000 to 8,000 and patients per year in that facility, and this would be run by community dental clinics, a nonprofit. So there would be no operating um, costs by the county. It would be um, a nonprofit and then fundraising. Um, and with that, I'll entertain any questions. Are there any questions? I, I was one that asked that, uh, that we take a little further look at this. I appreciate uh, the job you did, Amanda, and, and the information that you got back to us was, was very good. And I uh, actually went to some of my dentist friends and we went through it and scrutinized it and they, they agreed uh, with, with your, your letter. The deeper issue really is the reimbursement piece of it. And that would be the thing that would probably be the more global solution but we still have a local problem, and this clinic would provide a local solution. So uh, with that, I, I can be in support of this. Is there anyone uh, else that wants to comment or make a motion? Mr. Chair, Commissioner this Colby. is Lisa. I did a little, um, little digging, too, on this, and you know, because this is such a, a missing link out, especially in rural areas for people to get dental care. And then often, as you know, these people end up in our emergency rooms and we end up paying for them anyway. Um, and Mille Lacs County has a mobile unit that they got a grant for last year and they're providing service at a number of different places, the schools and early childhood programs around the county. So I, in addition to supporting this, I also kind of want to see if there's anything more that Sherburne County can be doing in this area uh, moving forth. I know a number of our people will end up at this right clinic, and I think some of our people also end up getting served by this Mille Lacs County Mobile Dental Clinic is what I was told. So um, I'm just curious, is there anything more that we as a county could be doing to fill this void? Um, ourselves in the future. Commissioner, I'm sorry. Uh, we're, we're, Commissioner Danielski will allow uh, uh, an answer to that question, then I'll get right back to you. Commissioner, um, as you know, uh, our PMAP contracts change with every state procurement, and so um, I would say five, six years ago, UCARE was a PMAP provider, and UCARE did provide the Ronald McDonald 
Mobile. Um, it was a mobile dental clinic here at the Sherburne County Government Center. And so we did have that once a month and it was heavily utilized. And unfortunately, when that PMAP contract went away, there went the, the mobile dental clinic option. Um, we have partnered since then with the uh, Sherburne County United Way. They've worked to um, also secure a grant, I believe it was last year, and has that dental, um, a mobile dental clinic. Um, I, three or four times, I forget. Um, we have not pursued any grants um, to reinstate that service. However, in our integrated services work, um, the dental issue was brought up again, and so that was a priority and, and a task on our on our action plan. Um, and we were waiting to see who our new PMAP provider would be to see if we could make a link there. And then I think you all know what happened with the procurement uh, statewide this last go around, and so now that's on hold um, for another year and then COVID took over. So we were kind of waiting um, to see who our PMAP providers were to see if we could uh, move any traction on that, if that answers your question. Okay. Uh, Great, thank you. Commissioner Danielski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I was just going to concur with um, Lisa's question that um, obviously based on the information that we were given by Tammy today, that we do have a very large hole in um, providing or finding a way to provide services to our lower income for their dental needs, which is a key in um, your overall health. There's a lot of times you can't even have some surgeries unless you take care of um, any dental issues. Um, so I definitely concur that we should be um, finding a way to provide that uh, ability for uh, residents that need that. Um, my concern is also with um, partnering with Wright County, which is a great opportunity, but it's how are we going to make sure that they have a way to get there. We don't have an agreement anymore with, um, it used to be we shared our transportation services, but now it's um, TriCap and um, Wright County uses a different um, organization and we don't have really an agreement to cross the, um, river basically so to get them there and get them back it's going to be a challenge and i think we need to explore that solution as well okay thank you commissioner danielski is there a motion to uh, approve sending this letter mr chair i'll move approval mr chair i'll move approval moved by commissioner second. dolan seconded by commissioner foby sorry that time delay gets you every time any <laughs> further discussion on this <laughs> Okay, we'll do the roll call. Commissioner Danielski. Aye. Commissioner Barant. Aye. Commissioner Foby. Aye. Commissioner Dolan. Aye. Commissioner Schmizing votes aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. You've got the next item on our agenda as well. Yes, it's been delegated to me. <laughs> Don't act so excited. <laughs> uh, that one first, please. Okay, we're yes. going to move on to our COVID-19 pandemic outbreak update. Morning again, commissioners. Yes, uh, Bruce asked me to give a quick um, update, and we'll see if he has anything afterwards with a county response. Um, but just a quick situation summary. Um, statewide, there are and these are, again, yesterday's numbers, uh, 7,234 confirmed cases. So you'll have to excuse me because I'm going to make hand motions since I decided not to have a PowerPoint. So the curve is going like this. Um, there are 4,212 individuals no longer needing isolation. So that's a very steep curve, and that's a good curve because that means folks are, are getting off isolation. Then there are 396 hospitalized. So here's where we see that curve kind of flattened, 166 in the ICU, an even flatter curve, and then 428 deaths. And if you look on the MDH website, that is a flat curve. So while cases are ramping up, um, that's because testing is more available. Um, I want you to really kind of focus on in terms of how we're doing statewide until we can get more comprehensive data, the hospitalized ICU and the death curve. And again, those curves are flattening. Um, Keisha put, put the um, lab confirmed case overview uh, graphic on, um, on the screen. Um, so today our total number of confirmed cases are 72. That's up from 61 yesterday. We have 48. 
Yes. Maybe it's just me, but there's nothing on our screen. It is not just you. That's because our administrator <laughs> is messing yeah, with the camera. There, there we go. go. There it is. There we go. Thank now you. we're all back. Um, <laughs> See, making trouble. I'll take blame for that technology. Uh, 72 confirmed cases, 48 active cases, um, 12 needing hospitalization, and unfortunately, we did have our first death, as uh, as Bruce had um, had mentioned. Um, we saw uh, so from last Tuesday to this Tuesday, that's a 177 percent increase. Um, folks are probably wondering why the steep increase. Um, so I'll give you three primary reasons why we've seen such a, a sharp increase this last week. First of all, uh, you'll note that we have three long-term care facilities uh, that have confirmed outbreaks. MDH confirms, um, defines an outbreak as one or more COVID positive uh, patients in their facility. And so you can check online at those three, but they are the Sanctuary in St. Cloud, Elk River Senior Living, and uh, St. Ben's was our latest addition. Um, I know you all are aware that um, Stearns County uh, is um, just exponentially increasing um, for a number of different reasons, but primarily um, some outbreaks in their production facilities, Pilgrim Pride and Ginio. Um, so while those facilities, I think Avon or Albany and Cold Spring, we do see some carryover um, for folks that are living in Sherburne County um, to those outbreaks. And then I would say the primary reason is increased testing. Um, Centra Care has really ramped up their testing. They are um, testing in their Becker, Monticello, and St. Cloud facilities. They are doing drive-through testing. They are doing testing um, on the weekends. I mean, they have really... Um, uh, ramped up their testing, and I just spoke with our medical consultant, who's the chief of staff at Fairview Northland, and he really hasn't seen Fairview um, do those efforts um, other than folks coming in for surgery or, or giving birth, and so um, that is not the same in all healthcare systems. And I really see think that statewide we would see um, similar to what's happening in Stearns County uh, if all healthcare um, facilities ramped up the testing like Centra Care has. Um, you've probably also seen on the news, but St. Cloud has gotten some national coverage. Uh, currently, Stearns uh, has the third most uh, COVID lab confirmed cases in the state of Minnesota, right behind Hennepin and Nobles County. Fri on Friday, New York Times reported that St. Cloud is the number one place nationwide where an outbreak is possibly going to come next. Uh, their daily growth rate is at 42%, and their cases are doubling every two days. Um, and again, that's really attributed to the meat processing plants as well as the aggressive testing. In response to that, um, MDH has become completely overwhelmed. Um, you'll, uh, if you do some math on this graphic, you'll notice that the numbers usually don't add up to 72. Uh, this is really a snapshot on those line lists that come from MDH uh, every time that there's a new case, so every night we're getting those now. Um, and uh, it arrives to me blank just with a name um, before that that individual has been contacted for that contact investigation, that contact interview. Um, and I would say probably the bottom third of my sheet is blank and has been blanked for the last two or three days. Uh, in response, local public health was notified last week that uh, MDH will start giving us contact tracing, uh, so those investigations. Um, so last week, late last week, some of the metro counties were getting trained, and I expect to hear this week um, that some greater Minnesota uh, counties will be trained. So what this means is that local public health will then take on those contact interviews and investigations for every lab confirmed case. Um, those occur seven days a week. Uh, those interviews happen from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Contact needs to be made within 24 hours of us receiving a, a confirmed case. The interviews take anywhere from 90 minutes to two hours. And along with that, there's a lot of data entry um, in a number of different systems. Um, par as part of that interview, we'll ask the individual, everybody that they've come in contact with since their onset date. Uh, and then we provide notification to all of those individuals that they've become, um, that they've had exposure to a lab confirmed case. And then uh, local public health will start making uh, day zero calls. So as long as they're on isolation, they get a daily touch point from a public health nurse or other staff. MDH estimates that they can only do five of these interviews per shift. I didn't get clarification if they're working eight hour, 10 hour, or 12 hour shifts. 
um, but that's not a lot to pump through. So um, we filled out a survey um, estimating that we can probably as soon as next week, dedicate nine staff to this contact tracing effort, um, and then we'll be able to expand beyond that. And at any point that we get overwhelmed, then we are able to um, ask the state for assistance as well. Um, long-term care, uh, you've seen also on the news the prevalence between long-term care and COVID cases. Um, long-term care, um, Minnesota Department of Health is just refining their long-term care strategy. Um, and so whenever there's an outbreak in a long-term care facility, they'll assign one state and one local nurse um, to be a nurse case manager to every facility with an outbreak. Um, and so we're still kind of defining what that means and our nurses uh, have been in contact with our three long-term care facilities that have an outbreak, but haven't yet been put in that nurse case manager role. And then the last update I have for you is um, two weekends ago, the fire departments um, did a cloth mask drive or cloth, <coughs> face, or cloth face coverings as we call them. Um, so the governor engaged a, an initiative um, for fire departments to help with um, distribution, collection and distribution. Countywide, we collected over 2,000 masks. Um, Public Health did an inventory of all long-term care and congregate care facilities and what their needs were. And we got requests for about 1,500 masks. Um, and so um, some fire departments decided to do their own distribution um, to those congregate care facilities and then they um, donated the leftovers for public health. So we're gonna be doing an ongoing drive to again close the loop, make sure everybody who requested a cloth face covering gets one. And then from there we wanna also expand that into our daycares, our social workers, uh, schools, um, any other uh, group um, where there's large gatherings um, for us to help with that. And with that, oh, and I'm sorry, and then we're also partnering with, um, there's, a, there's a lot of groups making cloth face coverings right now, and then um, 4-H and some other groups, and so we are trying to um, work in conjunction with those groups who already have those initiatives, and so we'll try to um, provide some consistency. And with that, I'll take any questions you have. Do we have any questions for Amanda? I think you gave us a pretty clear update. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to uh, Commissioner Correspondence. Uh, we'll go through the same list as roll call. Next time we should change it, huh, Rayanne? So you don't have to be first all the time, but we'll start with you for uh, Commissioner Correspondence, if we could, please. You're muted, Rayanne. We can't hear you. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yes. You bet. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I was able to attend. We're getting very good at virtual um, meetings. So um, there was a um, April 22nd. I attended the COVID-19 briefing um, that was held at the um, government center, but I was through um, which WebEx. Also had a virtual um, coffee chamber meeting with Senator Kissmeyer later that day um, with a lot of the businesses. Um, the concern was that a lot of our um, our um, restaurants and stores and their need to get open. Um, also had an AMC transportation and infrastructure policy meeting on that same day. April 24th, uh, COVID-19 briefing. April 27th, I had a virtual meeting with the Options Board. Um, April 29th, the COVID-19 briefing. And April 30th, we had our CMRP um, regional planning meeting. And then May 1st, um, COVID-19 briefing. And that pretty much um, is it for my activities. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Barant? Good morning. Good morning. Um, I attended um, COVID-19 briefings on the 24th, the 1st, and the 4th. And then I had an AMC HHN meeting on the 27th. Okay. Commissioner Foby. Um, I, I attended the um, COVID-19 county briefing. Uh, Great River Regional Library, we had a planning team meeting. We, I participated in an audit and also a finance meeting looking at our budget for next year 
that our goal is to come in at a 0% increase for our county. I think you'd all like to know that. Also um, participated in the ISD 728 meeting with Superintendent Bittman. And then our Dan Weber did a great job. Um, our care food shelf is struggling. They have uh, second harvest heartland is having trouble finding places for really large produce drops because of all the produce that's um, not getting sold. And so we are looking at offering one of those, partnering with the, the fairgrounds with Care Food Shelf um, to uh, support a produce drop coming up in the next few weeks. So stay tuned for that. Um, I had a Princeton Airport meeting last night. And then as Bruce said earlier, the AMC Blue Ribbon Committee um, that I was invited to participate with, basically AMC is trying to, is gathering a group of commissioners across the state to examine the lessons learned about colony government operations. So starting that discussion. Um, and I actually asked Keisha to send the questions, the key questions that they've asked us to gather information on. This came really fast. Um, I apologize I didn't get it out to you sooner. We're meeting for the first time tomorrow and we're going to be meeting one to two times a week going forth. So I think there will be more to come, but any input you have would be really helpful. And I also asked Bruce to work on that with our directors since they're the people that are most closely involved with all of this. So, okay. Thank you. That is it. Commissioner Dolan. Um, I only had <clears throat> uh, a couple CMRP meetings um, in that time frame, and then um, obviously all the the internal updates and the state deed calls and stuff that go on every other day. Um, it's it's a it's a laundry list of repetitive things yeah. at this point in time. So. Yes, I, I've been in three times a week, uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays for the command meetings. Uh, we did testify on the wet signature. I just sat in the back of the room while the rest of them did the heavy lifting. I'm probably gonna do the same thing today for uh, more legislative testimony on that. Uh, uh, crime Lab, I did attend a, a virtual meeting on our Midwest Crime Lab last week. Um, did receive a call from the president of AMC Rich uh, she yesterday to uh, just check in and see how we were doing the uh, executive committee and the uh, board of directors have not met in the last couple of months so uh, we'll be having a, a meeting this this month so we're uh, kind of excited to take the pulse of everyone again so uh, and uh, he did tell me that he had uh, appointed uh, Lisa to the blue ribbon committee I to him that he couldn't have picked a better commissioner to serve in that capacity and uh, we look forward to her capable representation of Sherburne County in that uh, group because that's going to have some real tales on it as we move move forward there's a lot to learn there is there anything else to come before our board uh, mr. Messel uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, members of the Commission, I uh, apologize for stepping out there. We're trying to get on Zoom for the House Committee meeting. Um, just to follow up with Amanda, um, we are anticipating, hopefully the Governor will give us specific guidance to allow for limited reopening of the Government Center May 18th. Um, we have made physical adjustments to the building, including um, uh, transaction windows for people. Uh, we are issuing facial coverings to employees. Uh, and we'll be encouraging uh, citizens to wear them as well, and we'll be practicing social distancing. Uh, to the extent that we can, we're trying to move everything uh, to uh, online or mail services right now. Uh, the one thing I would note is we have issued special guidance for payment of property tax bills, and that is posted on the county's website as well as its Facebook page. Uh, if people do uh, want to come in to pay in person, uh, we will try to our best to accommodate them and make sure they get a, a physical receipt. Otherwise, we will be uh, mailing receipts out to folks if they would like a receipt that the, their payments have been received. And then finally, just a note, uh, the county 
uh, did receive some positive press coverage for its efforts to reduce the impact on late property tax payments. Um, and uh, we appreciate the board's leadership in that. Uh, other counties are, are uh, similar or taking some more action. I don't have a report out of uh, Benton yesterday, but I know that they had it on their agenda to discuss. Okay. Well, these are unprecedented times. And uh, I think we're going to start to begin to look at uh, moving forward and reopening, hopefully in the not too distant future here. So that's going to be uh, important sign that we're traveling through this, but we're also going to be faced with a lot of illness and uh, considerable deaths. The uh, numbers have gone up. The uh, projections are going up. So it's uh, it's going to be a difficult couple weeks, I'm sure. So, and, but we'll get through it. We'll be positive, and we're going to uh, going to turn up and open up and and get things going again. So I think that's the uh, that's the positive nature of what we're doing. Anything else from anyone else? Okay, our agenda is complete. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone.